live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE live coverage here in Atlanta for Ansible Fest, part of Red Hat's event around automation anywhere. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman. Next guest is Abraham Snell, senior IT analyst at the Southern Company, customer of Ansible. Great to have you on. Thanks for coming on. I'm glad to be here. So, tell us about your company. What do you do there? Talk about what is Southern Company so and Southern what do you do there? Yeah, yeah. Southern Company is a, a very large, probably one of the top three um, energy providers and we're based in the southeast. Um, so, we're an energy utility, so we do uh, electric and gas. We also generate electric and gas, so. And your role there? And, and there, I, I am, um, so in infrastructure, we build systems, platforms, uh, and so I'm a kind of an OS specialist, and so okay. we build Red Hat uh, platforms for applications. And what's your, what's your goal here at the Ansible Fest this year? Well, a couple of things. So um, I submitted a talk, and so I'll be doing a talk here. Um, but the other thing is just to learn other ways uh, how to um, increase the automation footprint at our company. Yeah, Abraham, why don't you walk us through that some? We heard in the keynote, uh, you know, Red Hat talked about their journey, Microsoft talked about their journey, uh, JP Morgan did, so uh, I'm assuming that, you know, you're undergoing some kind of journey also. Bring, bring us a little bit, you know, bring us back to kind of as far back as you can and, you know, where things have been going. Yeah, so I heard about Ansible um, during a time when we were trying to automate our patch process. So our patch process was taking about 1,900 man hours per year, so it was, it was highly manual. And so we were looking at some other things like uh, Puppet was out, um, we, CF Engine, which is incredibly uh, complex. And then um, in a sales meeting, we heard about Ansible because that was the direction that uh, Red Hat was going. So I looked it up um, and, and learned about it. And, and that's the other thing, it, the barriers to entry were so low. It's modular, uh, you, you can jump in and start learning. You can write a playbook without knowing everything else about um, Ansible, and so, so that's how we got started with the journey. Okay, so the patches, you said over like 1,900 hours in a year, do you know how long it yeah. takes you now? Yeah, we reduced that to about 70 hours a year. <laughs> yeah, so it was a massive reduction uh, in the amount of time that we spent patching. Okay, and, and you know, have you been expanding Ansible, and you know, what, what's, where's it going from your footprint? Yeah, so as a, as a OS platform group, we are doing, you know, we do deployments now with Ansible, um, I pretty much do everything with Ansible. Honestly, someone just asked me to deploy some files. I was like, yeah, I'm going to write an Ansible playbook for that or use one that we already have. So um, now we have other groups. The, the database folks are now using Ansible to patch their databases. Um, and the network folks have been asking us questions, so maybe, maybe they'll be getting on board. But yeah, from my standpoint, I think I think we should expand Ansible. Uh, I don't know if, if, it's, if that's my call, that's a little above my pay grade, but I'm definitely going to do everything I can to make sure that- but You like the playbook concept. Yeah, oh yeah, oh absolutely. I mean, do you guys have a lot of playbooks developing? Are they just like growing everywhere, or people tend uh, to use them, or? Uh, yeah, we, so, you know, I learned something today that there's going to be like, kind of like a repository, and that, that will actually work. Right now, there, we probably have about 150 playbooks. Um, but people aren't able to just use them because they're just kind of stored someplace. They're built. Yeah. So what's your talk going to be? You mentioned you're going to do a talk. Oh yeah, how, um, how uh, automation can, can uh, reduce business conflict. So we're going to talk about creating automations that kind of reduce the siloed conflict. And so uh, I'll be talking about creating an easy button for groups who, you know, when you say, hey, I want to patch, they go, no, you can't patch this week. And so rather than having an argument about when we're going to patch, just give them an easy button and say, hey, when you're ready, press this button and it'll patch. And just let us know if anything turns red and we'll, we'll fix it. So. Do people want to get rid of the conflict? They like the conflict or, I mean, talk about the culture because this is, you know, this conflict's been there. Yeah, and oh yeah. Oh. What's, the, what's the culture like with the new capability? So, I mean, the culture is getting better. Uh, I wouldn't say we're there, we're on that journey that, that he mentioned. Um, but when you say people want conflict, hmm. Oh, that's it. <laughs> they're used to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're like, yeah, hey, yeah. We're just pass when I'm ready. The, <laughs> yeah. But the problem with that is it, it slows business down. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what we're all you know, there for yeah. happens a whole lot slower because yeah. we're back and forth and we're in conflict. So what automation does is it literally speeds up 
what we need to be doing, but it also helps us be friends along the way. So. You know, I want to get your thoughts on something. We did a little survey to our CUBE community on automation. You know, the couple key bullet points that we were reporting on earlier, pretty much everyone's agreed, but I want to get your reaction because you're doing it. One benefit of automation is for the teams are focus efforts on better results. You agree with that? Oh yes. Security yeah. is a big part of it, so automating helps security? Yeah, I think it does. I think anytime you can do something the same way every time, you, you minimize the ability for human error. So I think that helps security. Um, and so I'm not a security guy, but. Well, here's the, here's the next one I want to get your thoughts on. You mentioned culture. Automation drives job satisfaction. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah, so, uh, a few ways that just come to mind immediately. One is, I have a greater uh, opportunity for success because it's going to work the same way every time, right? Um, the second thing is, it kind of gives people options. So, I talk about this in my talk. You know, we, we tend to want options around the when, the where, sometimes even the how. Um, and so, automation can actually do that. And the third thing is, it really does free us up to do important stuff. You know, and so when I'm spending my time doing tedious things like <laughs> paperwork, yeah. um, automation helps me now to do the, the stuff I really want to do, the stuff I come to work to do. And there's new jobs being created on this. I mean, it's new opportunities. This creates growth for people. That's right. Potentially new higher level skills. Well, one of the cultural aspects of it is people are afraid that automation is going to kill my job, right? But honestly, when you start building this stuff, we've, we're finding out that, man, it takes a, a village to do all this stuff. So it really does take, uh, allow us to learn new things and, and probably send our careers in another direction. I, I hadn't seen a job that was killed yet. Yeah, well that's always, people they love to get better jobs and doing the, the mundane stuff. The final point on the, um, of our quick poll survey with our, of our community was that infrastructure and DevOps or dev professionals, developers or DevOps, they get, can get reskilling with this opportunity because it's kind of new things. Is reskilling a big part of, of the culture in the, in the trenches when you start looking at these new opportunities? Or, are people embracing that? What's the vibe there? What's your take on that? Uh, so my oh. take on it is it's probably some kind of bell curve, right? So you got probably 10% of the folks that are gung-ho. Yeah. You got probably that middle 80% that's like, yeah, either way. And then you got 10% that are like, dude, I'm about to retire. I, I don't want to do this anymore, or whatever. Or I'm afraid, or I don't think I could do it. So, but you know, that opportunity is, I, I mean, I, I was actually trained in college as a developer. I never wanted to do development, so I did not been in infrastructure. But now I'm getting to do development again, and I kind of like it, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, okay. You got yeah, playbooks, you got recipes, you got all kinds of stuff. Right, yeah. I mean, and I still get to be an infrastructure guy. So um, I think there's definitely opportunity for growth for, for that 90% that, that says, hey, we want to do this. Well, the scale and all the, all the plumbing is going to be still running. You, gotta, you still need network, you still need storage and compute. Yeah. Now you yeah, get these yeah. abstraction layers kind of building on top of that scale. Yes. So the question for you is, are you going to take this across the company and Am I going to take yeah. it across the company? Yeah, let's plow let's, some change yeah, through that, Southern. Let me get that promotion. So, you know, I am definitely championing, uh, being a champion for it because I want to share this. I mean, it just kind of makes life better. Um, so, yes, the plan is, hey, let me share this. The automation is great, but we actually have an automation team. There's a management team and a structure around automation, um, and and they allow me to kind of be on their, you know, come to their meetings and do some of the things with them. So, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, to it uh, awesome. propagating through Southern. Well, you certainly nailed the use case. Yeah. Uh, Abraham, does, does cloud, uh, public cloud fit into the, this discussion at all yet for, from your group? So public cloud is in the discussion um, and, and automation is a part of that discussion, but I think we're kind of early on in that process. There's not a whole lot around it. Uh, but, but the one thing where it really does fit is the way of thinking. Right, so now to be cloud native, automation is just really a part of that. And so you have to start thinking in a cloud native fashion. Um, and, and that's beginning, right? Uh, mostly now it's in the strategy pro uh, uh, 
um, time for it, um, but implementation of some things are coming. And the more we do automation, the more it kind of gets you ready for this idea of cloud. Yeah, it, I, I think that's a great point you talk about that mindset. The other thing when you talk about you know, infrastructure is infrastructure used to be kind of the boat anchor that prevented you from responding to the business. It yeah. was, okay, can you do this? Uh, yeah, I'll get to it in the next six to 12 months, maybe if we have the budget and everything. H how, do, how does automation help you respond to the business and be more a group of yes? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because um, infrastructure has often been seen as the party of no, right? Uh, <laughs> you can't but no, <laughs> and, and don't come back. Um, but, with, but with automation, what we're seeing is there are a lot of things that we can do because one of the things that you don't want to happen in infrastructure is create a task that I can never get rid of. Okay, I'm going to be doing this forever and a day. But now, if it becomes a push button item and I can do it consistently every time, it's like, oh yeah, why, why don't we do that? Why haven't we been doing that in the past? So yeah, I, um, that's exactly uh, you know a great point is that now, Infrastructure can feel like a part of the party rather than being the people sitting in the corner. They don't, they just, they don't want to do this, right? Yeah, and it's great. And it's, and it's a critical component of scale. Abraham, I want to final, ask you if my final question for you is: You've had a great experience with Ansible automation. This is the whole conference, automation for all. Yeah. What's the learnings? Your big takeaway over the past couple of years as you've been on this wave, and it's going to be bigger behind you. Yeah. You said clouds coming. A lot more, a lot more scale, a lot more software, a lot more applications. What's your big learnings? What's your big takeaway? You know, my big takeaway, believe it or not, is really not technical. So I've been doing this 23 years or so years, and I never thought that there would be a tool that could really change and affect culture the way it has. And so for me, my big takeaway is, man, this automation thing helps my job in ways that's that's not technical. You know, it helps me, uh, you know, work better with other teams. Now there are networks of folks that I work with who I never would have worked with before um, who, who are doing automation. We get along. Uh, it's not them over there. Yeah, you it's know? a social network it's, now. It's a social it's, network. Yeah. And who knew that a tool could, could make that happen? And you can have more collaborative relationships, get someone's face and no one's going to get offended, That's have right. conversations, share playbooks. Yeah, because, because with automation, now we, we can all focus on the big picture. What is the corporate goal? Not what is my, you know, I just want to keep this running or I just want to keep this up. Why, why are we keeping it up? Why are we keeping it running? What is the corporate goal? Brings corporate better goal. teamwork, probably. <laughs> it, it, it sure does, yeah. Abram, Shared vision. Thank <laughs> you for coming on and sharing your insights. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank yeah, uh, finally, Red, Red Hat Accelerators, maybe just explain the, the shirt and the hat. Oh yeah, I got to plug the accelerators. So the accelerators are like a customer advocacy group. And so um, what has happened is, and I was actually a charter member of the accelerator, so I got to plug that too. Um, started a couple of years ago. They just call us and, and, and talk about new stuff that's coming out at Red Hat and go, what do y'all think? And we are brutally frank with them, sometimes too brutally. That's good, uh, yeah. they sometimes, want that. And, and they, they keep coming back for more. I'm thinking, really guys, we just abused you. But um, <laughs> no, it is a great group of guys and girls. Um, and, um, and, it, and, it afford, and for us, the customers, it affords us opportunities to see new technology and get swag. I Again, guess. collaboration it, scales as well there. Oh, absolutely, and, and you get to see what other companies are doing, like you know my peers, I go, hey, what are y'all doing in cloud? What are y'all doing in automation? Uh, and so you get to, get to share yeah, those. Yeah, Stu and I interviewed a lot of the Red Hat folks. They love the feedback. Oh yeah. They're a technical group. They want brutal honesty. Okay. Because well, you, you're feeding into the product requirements. Well, I'm your This is what here. they want. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Yes sir, Appreciate thank it. you so much. Thank Abraham Snell here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Back with more coverage here at Ansible Fest, day one of two days of coverage. We'll be right back.